Mamba out. Saucy, yeah, bitch, I do this often My bitch is bad, she always in office So I got a tags, I'm running my body Can't see the pads, I'm living too fast With 20, my dash, I'm hoping I lost him He wanna brag, I did his bag And took what he had, don't care what it cost him Then he broke, he turned to a hoe I seen him before, this shit is exhausting Ran out of hope, I wanna be known I'm snatching my soul, you're Randy Marshall I even broke, I'm Hey guys, man. welcome back to Sports Now With Darius and Aiden, and well, it's just me today I decided to try something different And today, I'm going to be dissecting some comments that the Ben Simmons made about the Brooklyn Nets and about him winning the Defensive Player of the Year. First, let me start off with the comment saying that he announced that I am the Defensive Player of the Year. Said it out loud. Rudy Gobert is not the Defensive Player of the Year. He brought out the receipts. When Rudy Gobert played against me and guarded me, I dropped 42. And I'm not a score. Those were word for word what the Ben Simmons said. Now I'm addressing him as the Ben Simmons because he's making a bold and bold statement now. He's been well renounced as a superstar in this league and he's been seen not necessarily at the top but in argument for being at the top. He shockingly was out of my top under 25 list for a couple of reasons that I stated. One, he'll be 25 in two months. So he wouldn't have counted anyway this year. Two, his scoring needs to develop more. We call you not a scorer because you don't develop as well as you have on the scoring. And we see other guys on your team like Joel, who can be a force on both sides, full court, runs the paint, defender in the paint, gets your rebounds. We understand you got the steals, you got the rebounds as well because you're 6'10". And we understand that, hey, you're not a shooter. Your shot just doesn't fall. Danny Green, Danny Green's a shooter. Facility, right? Got many other people on that team who are facilitators on both sides of the ball. If the identity of your of you is going to be a defender, and you were, I believe, the number one overall pick. And you were pegged as a guy who can go both ways, a guy who can score, a guy who can defend, a guy who can do it all. You're not living up to your billing. You're not what the 76ers got you for. What we saw at LSU is not necessarily everything we saw, we're saw. we seeing now. right? We saw this amazing defender. We saw this amazing talent. We saw this amazing athlete. But we haven't seen the top performing, the top scoring Ben Simmons. We see flashes of it, like you said. Against Rudy Gobert, one of the best defenders in the league, you drop 42. You still average 15, 16 points per game. We want to see more on the scoring end. Now, it's cool. You can say you're the defensive player of the year, yada, yada, yada. You can say your team's the top team in this league. But we like to see you score more on the defensive and offensive. You're doing great on the defensive. None. This is no shade to him. You're doing great on the defensive. We just want to see more on the offensive sometime. Now to your second statement on how Brooklyn is an amazing team with amazing talent, but there's one ball and you still got to play defense. Well, what in the world are you saying right now? James Harden has been called on many occasions for his defense. I agree. Kyrie Irving isn't the best defender, but he still defends. But for you to question Kevin Durant's defense is simply blasphemous. Blake Griffin, he can defend. Not as best as he could in his prime, but he can defend. LaMarcus Aldridge. I'm, I'm trying to avoid cursing here. He dang straight can defend. Again, had to avoid cursing there because I wasn't going to say all that. So... For you to stand there and to say that Brooklyn as a team, now we might be taking what you're saying out of context, but you're saying Brooklyn as a team cannot defend would be a blasphemous comment. Now, if everybody on Brooklyn is healthy, they would blow the 76ers out of the water. 
that's not even me being that's not even me being confident that's not me being confident in their team this it's just a fact the assortment of talent you have on that team you have all-stars you have so many all-stars on that team deandre jordan kevin durant kyrie irving harden griffin aldridge the fact that this team is bond together we said in our blake griffin video the fact that this team is possible to make in the league is scary me and darius weren't exactly supportive of the narrative of super teams as a whole when they first started popping up with this that and the third and i was not a big fan of the warriors and you know and i've said some things about steph and i said some things about clay still respect them and love them as players clay thompson is one of my favorite players in the league stephen curry Amazing player, respectful. Oh, I respect his game immensely in this league. It wasn't to be offensive any way towards them, but we were just saying that without this super team, they have the same success. Now we understand that that yes, Clay and Steph won a championship without KD. Yada yada yada. The Splash Bros, the Splash Bros did it. Yeah. Again, Doctor Aiden has to return to the premises. I don't know if Clay is going to be the same. Two major injuries back to back, you missing two seasons. I don't know if you're going to ever be the same again. That's just me being straight. You own a lot of records. You own the record for postseason threes, not Steph. You own a lot of different records for three pointers and things of that nature. And I believe that you will one day take your rightful place atop the all time three pointer list with Steph once you get back. I think you're number 11 right now. I think it'll be good. But to put the narrative of a super team together, we s saw uh, the beta version. If you know, you know, the beta version, the kind of the first take of what it was with the Warriors. But what we see with the Brooklyn Nets is something that the league may never see again. The assortment of stars and the assortment of people at the, not necessarily at the prime of their career, but you were able to get them for cheaper. You got people in their prime for cheaper. I criticized Steve Nash immensely. I didn't think Steve Nash could do anything. I apologize to Steve Nash. I apologize to Steve Nash right now. I didn't think he could manage all of these personalities. I didn't think he could manage all of these people. I didn't think he could manage it. I apologize to Steve Nash. You, you, my friend, are a capable coach in this league i'm not going to say great coach because when you have every all-star in the when you have almost every we have almost a quarter of all-stars in the league and at the boat you, you can't be counted as the best coach in the league unfortunately you're not going to get any of my coach of the year votes that's for sure if i had a coach of the year vote you're not going to give me my coach of the year votes ben simmons will always be my defensive player of the year my mvp up in the air right now my sixth man of the year uh up in the air my most improved player, Julius Randle, easily. And yeah, it's about all I have for you today. Again, make sure to like up this video so that you can, so that we can prove that I can stand alone on this show and I can carry my own weight and I can have my own episode do as well as it can. Like it up, please. Comment down below. Subscribe. Again, I gave you something a little nonchalant. I gave you, I gave you the nonchalant calmness of me. And Darius is up in your face and yelling. I gave you the nonchalantness and the calmness. Got to reward me for that a little bit, guys. Come on now. Again, I'm going to say it for the third time. Like it up. Subscribe. And we will see you on the next episode of Sports Now with Darius and Aiden.